I sat down on my computer when we were prepping for this episode and I'm like, I'm just gonna, I know the carnivore people and people who eat high protein diets are very loud on the internet. And they say, I'm right, he's wrong. She's right, she's wrong. And so I just wanted to see where they're getting their information from, where are these studies, you know, what's what's the other side? So I sit down and I go Google like research on carnivore diet, research on high protein, research on keto. And there is so little research, I was shocked. Because I see these things on Instagram and I'm like, surely these people are saying there's... So I looked at one single study that measured, I think it was 1,800, because they had like 3,000, but they threw out, you know, 1,800 or whatever. So they had about 1,800 people left of self-reported short-term benefits. So they say nothing has been conclusively or even studied for long-term benefits of high-protein diets or of carnivore diets, I mean. Um, But short term, there were, you know, some benefits of X, Y, and Z. And you do not deny that there are some benefit, short term benefits of no, carnivore. We have to discuss the benefits so people understand why people gravitate to those diets and feel better. But I first just wanted to point out how little to zero research is done, yet so many people are so sure that it is the solution for their health and longevity. You know, they're looking at short term research where it lowers cholesterol, they drop their body weight, or diabetes. Their, their, their diabetes numbers look better. And even some mitochondrial studies, which reduce free radical production from the mitochondrial generation of energy from fat instead of from means. carbohydrate. It means when you're getting, when you're in ketosis and the mitochondria is getting, burning fat, it might produce less free radicals than burning fat, um, carbohydrate for energy. Oh. So there's some short term biochemical benefits to being in ketosis. And there's so, and, but, in, but in any case, um, just to hit home that point is that, um, there that the short-term studies may show some benefits but now we finally have long-term studies and to be a carnivore or keto advocate you have to have some illogical rationalization as why you're going to disregard a hundred long-term studies that show danger and they do they throw them all out the window they say i was in, i was interviewed by and debated this guy saladino who was one of the like the founders of the carnivore diet who said, oh, all those studies don't matter because they're epidemiologic of studies and it's just led to the people who are what, more wealthy or have television sets are going to be healthier and the most of the people who are vegans or something like that. You just threw out all the studies. So I'm saying you can't throw out all the studies that corroborate each other from all the parts of the world. Now we have really incredibly effective, appropriate, and intellectually done research showing long-term following these people on these keto diets and heavy protein diets for 20 years, 30 years, showing how dangerous they are. And by the way, this guy, Saladino, this doctor who was so harming people, just was recently interviewed like some months ago, and he's off the carnivore diet himself. What's he, he doing now? He's doing fruit with meat now. He got rid of the carnivore diet because total carnivore, because he was having sleep disturbances, lowering testosterone, and too much joint pain and muscle aches. Because obviously, when you're on a keto or carnivore diet, when you're carbohydrate restricted, you get high amounts of uric acid from all the purines you're eating. And purines are even higher in, in organ meats, which they recommend, which means more uric acid. And more uric acid means gout. It means more propensity to kidney stones. It means more kidney damage. Mm-hmm. But it also means more aging of the cartilage and joints. And the aging of the cartilage and joints, these people, even though they're big weightlifters and doing all this, they think they're keeping their muscles strong, they become old, you know, osteo, they become in pain. In pain. They get in pain. They get, um, their cartilage and joints go. The Sounds bones, terrible. Yeah. He sounds like he's also using himself as an experiment just to see what happens and then it's changing, um, which I'm just so happy that you deal with a lot of elderly people. So they like followed your recommendations. You see how it's going well, and then you help them Mm -hmm. modulate any needed protein as they age, use protein powder, all these things so you don't get too frail. Because you said so yourself, you are very, you are very like committed to not getting too frail as you age because you're 70, you still got muscles. How are you feeling about the protein situation? Yeah, I like I exercise a lot still, and the reason I exercise a lot is because I love to downhill ski and ski powders, steeps, cliffs, moguls, at, you know, double blacks, mm-hmm. and I want to. I, I love doing that; it's so much fun. Mm-hmm. But to do that, you got to be strong. It's not going to be safe. Right. So I'm testing my strength with box jumping and lifting weights and making sure I'm working out in the gym so I'm safe on the mountain. Right. You know, and I want to test my strength against. Can I still lift as much as I did when I was younger? Can I still jump up and down? And can do, you? I'm a little less, <laughs> a little less, but I'm still pretty good. Okay, but, cool. but I'm pretty good. But as far as like my um, strength on the mountain or in the skiing, I'm just as good or better because I devote, I devote so much attention to it now. You know what I mean? Right. Because you look the same to me, but you, I know we were talking about this too. You said, yeah, I'm just going to be, I'm building muscle now and keeping up with it so I don't lose it as I age. Right. Which I think it's just going to be really cool when you're 80 to see all the 
muscles. Well, I think it's it's that's the whole key to to for, for stalling aging is to try to work on keeping your muscle to fat ratio favorable as you age mm -hmm. with this attention to diet, which I think is a fun hobby, to attention to modulating your diet to have the to maintain your youthful vitality as totally. you age. And then just to stick on that, when you're on these keto diets with carbohydrate restricted, you from meat, dairy, fish, or any kind, you raise IGF one into cancer promoting levels, and that's insulin-like growth factor one, which is a um, a hormone that promotes cellular replication and promotes angiogenesis, allows cells to cells to replicate and get a blood supply. So it allows tumors to grow as you're maximizing muscle mass. It allows tumors to grow. So extra protein, even though it may promote a little more muscle mass, extra animal protein promotes IGF-1, and then it also changes the bacteria in the gut, which means it from unfavorable bacteria, bacteria in the gut promoting, promoting TMAO formation, which is trimethylamine oxide, which is a pro-inflammatory substance that ages us and promotes atherosclerosis. And then this high diet high in meat is deficient. It's deficient in vitamin C, it's deficient in folate, it's deficient in vitamin E, it's deficient in phytochemicals, it's deficient in magnesium, it's it's deficient. So how could these people on these, their, their diet's deficient, it's producing too much acidity, it's aging their joints, it's promoting cancer, and it's just absolute craziness and people love to follow it. I am actually surprised because I feel like that's their number one best point is like it, it has all the vitamins and minerals you need all the amino acids it is not deficient so i'm actually shocked right now to hear you call out these nutrients that it's deficient folate in. only comes from plants vitamin c comes from plants vitamin e comes from plants right. vitamin you know all these things come and from you plants here on the yeah. internet actually people are now saying there's like posts on it people believe it that plants have nutrients or anti-nutrients anti -nutrients to yeah. and like a poison for yeah. you essentially poison, yeah, yeah. right so i mean all yeah. animals like humans from the beginning of time have been eating berries plants all so it's and primates we're primates totally which fully eat plants right and we have the undeniable data and here it's 2024 but here's a study from 2023 let me just let me just say give you the title of this study low carbohydrate diets low fat diets and mortality in middle-aged and older people a prospective cohort study. They divided people into cohorts and a medium follow-up, medium of 23.5 years with more than 165, almost 166,000 deaths. Imagine the amount of people you have to follow to get 165,000 deaths. They have to follow like a million people to get 165,000 deaths. Okay, so they were able to categorize all these huge amounts of people over 25 years. This is an incredible study published last year. It's just phenomenal. Okay, and research categorized people as eating either a healthy or unhealthy low-fat or low-carb low carb diet. And what do you think they found? Of course, what they found. All these <laughs> thousands of people and thousands of, hundreds of thousands of deaths. What they found is that low-carb diets contribute the most to early life deaths below age 70. Really? With people on keto diets, 28% more likely to die of any cause. Really? Any cause of cancer, any cause. heart disease, take And pick. participants on an unhealthy low-carb diet, that means not carb, more unhealthy, low carb, more unhealthy proteins, like more more meat and bacon and processed foods, increase their mortality by 38% every year. 38% increased risk of death every single year they will follow. These people were dropping food. off fly, like flies. Yeah, it's you know, franken food. It's just craziness, yeah. right? It's not real food though. It's It's manufactured in a plant that is filled with sugar and all these processed stuff. Well, we're talking about animal products here. We're oh, talking but about local. Processed foods as well. No, no. I thought that um, was 38% over the years. No, participants on low carb diets, oh. when they were on unhealthy low carb, which unhealthy low carb means they were having more red and processed meats. Oh, I thought you meant like sugar candy. Like no. Could be, oh, okay, okay. No, no. But that, but okay, so that's one aspect. And then we have other studies coming out, pretty much the same thing with the same um, effects. It's right, I think it's right here. This study coming out in The Lancet. This is really interesting. Okay. Coming out in 2018. Okay. People who had the lowest amount of carbohydrates had the highest amount of premature death. Yes, true. But people who got more than 70% of their energy from carbohydrates also had a higher risk of mortality. I see what you did there. There's an optimal range. Right. So here's the thing is that less carbohydrates bad, too much carbohydrate bad. True, people could argue because too much carbohydrates they were eating maybe more processed carbohydrates like rice or you know white rice or white bread, yeah. But still, when they went and analyzed all long-lived societies and long-lived populations, they found there was an optimal carbohydrate range in those in the blue zones as well. 
and the optimal fat range that we're saying here. And then the people that live the longest, who are the people? So this is a published in The Lancet, 2018. The title of this study is Dietary Carbohydrate Intake and Mortality, a Prospective Cohort Study and Meta-Analysis of All the Studies, right? And they, eat, they follow the eating patterns of like more than a half a million people around the world. Like half a million, you know, half a million people we're talking about. And they found that when you replace carbohydrates with animal products, more death. But both high and low carbohydrates were associated with increased mortality. The sweet spot of the longest life were mid-ranged when people got more protein and fat from high quality carbohydrates like beans and high quality proteins like nuts and seeds. So beans and nuts and seeds were the major factor modulating death here and life. More, more longer life, less, less life. Okay, so it says, source of food, the whole plant foods, mod modified the association between carbohydrate intake and mortality. What, it meant, what that means is that this tracking of carbohydrates and mortality was showed up because people had either restricted carbohydrates too low, or when they went too high, they didn't use whole food sources of carbohydrates. Totally. Because whole food sources of carbohydrates have protein and fat in them, except for fruit. So fruit is the only whole plant food that isn't high in protein. The other plant foods, there are five of them, intact grains, vegetables, beans, nuts and seeds. I'm missing one, I guess. Is there four now? In intact whole grains, I guess there's only four. Intact whole grains, vegetables, nuts and seeds and beans, right? Those are the four sources of, because fruit is the sixth category, but fruit is kind of low in protein. Right. The only way you can make a plant protein consistently too low in protein is with too much fruit, because it'll diminish the amount of the higher protein plant foods you're eating. So as your diet moves towards fruitarian, an excess of calories from fruit, lowering the amount, pushing off your plate, those higher protein plant foods, then your diet can become too low in protein as we age and require more protein. How would someone know that? because we're telling them right here on the podcast. <laughs>